Good evening. My name is Om, and I'm going to share with you about the color semiotic Asia and communities today. We are aware that color sends signal all the time, and so we have to be sensitive to this. Color has been used a lot in communication, in brand communication, in many advertisements, in packaging design. So we have two hypotheses about the color symbolism. The first one, color connotes different meaning due to the change of cultural context. So it means that color should mean differently across countries. The second hypothesis about color symbolism is that color connotes different meaning due to the change of generation. So it means that within the same culture, but across different generations, color should mean different things. To test our two hypotheses, we adopt two methodologies. The first one, we did the regional study among four intake offices, namely um, China, Japan, Thailand, and Vietnam. The second one, on the MROC, all we call is 24-7 digitography because we follow them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, was adopted to test the second hypothesis that within the same culture, but various age group, colors should be connoted differently. So have you ever wondered why color does matter to a brand? Most brands rely very much on color to represent their brand personality, the connotation, the intended message of the brand. Look at this slide by itself. Although the name, the brand name is there, but you probably question whether they are real brands because color is not the original ones. Color gives meaning within one same rate can be different things under the different contexts. For example, red can be red glow, red flame, red plum, red sharp. Red fresh and red hot. It depends how that red is in, in which context. And red had been used a lot in food category to arouse the needs, to arouse appetite. You can see all these brands use red as their logo because red connotes arousing feeling. Color also enhance memory. Look at this frog itself. If I tell you once, it's called red-eyed tree frog. The next time you see this frog, you can remember it. Why is that? Because the color itself tells you something. Let's play a little bit of the local quiz. I would like you to answer to yourself that which logo, which branch are you thinking of when you see this color? Let's start with the first one. I'm sure that a lot of you say that is Maggie. The second one, without any brand name, but if you see this, a lot of you think of IKEA. And the next one, especially among the younger generation, if they see this color, they can surely tell you that is Twitter. Color not only enhances memory, color matters. And it has some figures for you, some numbers on the color. There are various studies saying that color increase brand recognition and visibility up to 80%. 
color also improve readership as much as 40%. Color accelerates learning and comprehension to up to 73%. However, what I would like to highlight today is that color is not a static energy. It changes its meaning depending on context. It portrays both conscious and subconscious messages across culture, across generation. Look at this red dot, for example. The red dot itself, if it is in the rectangular shape like this, you think of the Japanese flag. If it is on the human face, you think of the clown. And if it is surrounded with other two colors, yellow and green, you think of the traffic light. And that's what I mean that color is not the static energy. One color cannot apply to all situations. We have to think about the context seriously. Each color always has two polar sides of symbolism, positive and negative one, depending on the context again. For example, red can be happiness, sexiness, love, passion, and energy. On the negative side, it means heat, destruction, rebellion, aggression, violence. Another example about black. The positive connotation of black is power, confidence, charm, luxury, sexy of men. On the negative side, it's about death, sadness, loneliness, devil. So each color always has two polars. We have to be very sensitive how we use this color in different contexts. And in the context, one thing that we have to be very concerned on is on the cultural context. What I'm going to give you the example in the next slides is that one color across different cultures can mean different things. Talk about green, for example. When we think of green, most of us think of the tree, forest, refreshing, the fresh feeling. However, it may mean different thing in China, especially among the older generation. Let me tell you a, a story about the green in China here. Once upon a time in China, in a remote area of China, there is a family, an old man with a young wife. Every day in the morning, the, young, the old man will go to work leaving his young wife alone at home. However, his young wife cheating on him because once he left for the work, there is a sacred lover coming to the house every day. One day, the old man forgot his lunchbox. So he went home during the daytime and that was shocking to this wife and that secret lover. So the young man was in a hurry and left the green hat at home. When the old man arrived at the home, he was so happy because he thought that his wife bought him the new green hat. So he wore it right away. However, all the neighbors knew what happened in the house, in the family. Since then, the green hat became a symbol of the cheated wife. So you never wear a green hat in China, especially I heard a lot of um, Caucasian men that sometimes they wear the green knitting hat in China and they wonder why the Chinese woman laugh at them. This is something that we have to be sensitive that green can be used in many things but sometimes it may be sensitive in some context. Another example that we did the original study that one color, for example, blue, means different things in different countries. For example, blue now in China means a new and modern image. It's the opposite color to red, which is associated with traditional Chinese. So the younger generation prefer something blue rather than red. So a lot of brands that if they want to promote their modern image, they will link with the blue color. On the other hand, the same blue in Japan means totally different thing. Why in China the blue mean modern and new image? In Japan, the color blue means very conservative. 
the Japanese link the blue to the mother nature, to the harmony, to the mother nature of Earth. The same blue again for Thai people, we link it to freedom, not modern image. Thailand itself, Thai means freedom. So Thailand means the land of freedom. When we think of freedom, we always think of blue, the sky, the free of problem. And the same blue within Vietnam means neutral feeling, hope, faith, and peace. So from the example, only one single color of blue within Asia, we still have different kinds of meaning. So it is very sensitive how we use color symbolism across culture, Asia, Europe, America, and versus even in Asia, the four countries have different meanings towards one single color. Color dynamics, we come to the second hypothesis. What's about within the same culture, but across different generations? Will color meaning change across period of time? We adopted MROC to follow the lifestyle and how each generation link to the feeling by color. So we have Gen Y, who, those who are around 20 to um, 32, and Gen X, 35 to 50, and Baby Boomer, 50 plus. What we found out that they have different kind of meanings toward one color. For example, if we ask for black, why the younger generation link black to the 07, the sexy guy, the sporty car, very luxurious, the material reason. The older generation link it to sad, death, loneliness. Another color, white. The younger generation link it to iPhone, iPad, the new high technology. Why at the same time the older generation link it to religion, to temple, to Buddha image? And if we ask them how they link, how they see the tone of mood across the day, across the, from the morning to night, how they feel, which kind of color that represents their feeling, you can see that then why their energy start after six o'clock. So you don't have to wonder why they come to work late because the energy start very late. Why Gen X and BB, baby boomer, especially baby boomer, the energy start at very early of the day. So the Gen X and BB are high on work mode because their success is the result of the hard work. On the other hand, Gen Y has more energy on play mode, which is a time for them to connect with other people. So when Gen Y is valuing the connection, the social media very much. So that's why they pick up the red color to represent their feeling after 6 o'clock in the evening, after work, actually. So from all these two examples, we can see that within the same culture, but across different age, different generation, color also signal different things, different connotation. And that's my final remark on decoding color symbolism. Color is very important. It has been used in our daily life. It has been used in the brand communication. It has been used in marketing research, in our analysis, our recommendation to the clients. Color matters, color differs, and color dynamics. It evolves in daily life. We choose which color of dress to wear to project our image. We choose the color of car to buy to project our intended message our, of our personality. Color sales, it is often a subliminal influencer. That's why we have to be able to tell the clients which color of their packaging should be which color of the advertisement um, atmosphere should be, What's in which position their packaging should be positioned in the shelf, whether it should be placed to this 
similar brands or different brands to make a differentiation. Color tales. It creates the symbolic story of each brand, each logo, and each person which inject into our brand. So we have to be sensitive on color symbolism is only one of the, sing, um, the single symbiotic techniques that we have to be sensitive. And especially with the MROC, the Emerging uh, Marketing Research Online Community, you have to be ready to listen, to engage, observe, and absorb 24-7. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your questions. Hi, Orm. Okay, that was absolutely great. The last two thirds, three quarters were fantastic. The first right. um, four or five minutes, I think you took a little bit to get used to the system. Um, yes. <laughs> after, after four minutes, your timing was better with the slides.